Hey Man Cave, this is Bob from the Bob Zenscale Man Cave, and we're at the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we're going to take a ride on a historic or vintage rail cars behind some steam. Yes, we're going to have some steam today, and uh, we're going to show you what that is all about today. So the N-Scale Convention has this event prior to the convention actually starting tomorrow, so they're doing this special excursion just for us. So let's go take a look at what the museum has to offer and we'll show you what we're going to see on this trip. Let's go. Okay, coming into this uh, station here, we got gift tickets, got a gift shop back here. Of course, got the restrooms, a snack bar down this way. Take a look at so there you go, a little seating room down there to eat your snacks. You can get all sorts of stuff. You can get pie, ice cream, drinks, cookies, all that good stuff. With some t-shirts. Yeah, the waiting area outside here, in front of the tracks. And you got the main line right up there. And uh, the train comes in from down here and then picks up passengers and goes back the other way. So we got uh, some vintage stuff out here. Passenger cars, steam locomotives, cabooses, all sorts of stuff. They use a lot of this for campground stuff and also storage for excursions. And so they kind of have all these things stacked here ready to be uh, picked up and used on occasion. They'll use that. Or they bring stuff from down at the other end of the yard. 4501. It's a uh, 28. Two, and uh, this is what we're going to be riding behind today. We get some people coming off the bus. Okay, we're at the Scale Trains road trip trailer. And they have some N Scale stuff all on display along with some HO. They got an N Scale announcement for a locomotive. And we have some things here. Well, I guess my guess was wrong. We're doing an SD40-2. In N scale. That's the new announcement. Hey man, Cavians, that was lunch. We had some lunch here with uh, the Scale Trains group here, and we're getting ready to go on this excursion ride here behind 4501 the steam locomotive. And uh, we're gonna probably be getting some uh, handouts here, you know, some giveaways that they're gonna hand out, like some hats and t shirts and stuff like that. So we'll uh, continue on with our day. It was a pretty good lunch. I had ham and cheese and turkey kind of thing. And, you know, it was pretty good. Let's go see what else we can find today.
We're in the rear car of this train. 220 seats, we have 180 people scheduled. We're about ready to depart here at 1 o'clock behind 4501. <laughs> Wow. Well, what they do is the ones that are in the middle of restoration, they have to the area they work. On this train, <laughs> why did I invite them to sit here? I don't know. Sure I guess we're getting drone video tonight <laughs> or today. You at least try. Yeah. <laughs>
This would be in one of the smaller classes, the MS class, which of which there were about 180 MS class locomotives. So hopefully there were a total of 485 282 class locomotives on the Southern Railway. Of those 485, only one survived being cut up for scrap. And you were looking at it right here, the world famous 4501. What saved this locomotive from being cut up for scrap? In 1948, it was living in Princeton, Indiana, on the St. Louis Division of the Southern Railway. It was purchased off of the deadline in Princeton, Indiana, by Mr. L.C. Bruce, the master mechanic for the Kentucky and Tennessee Railway in Stearns, Kentucky. Mr. Bruce originally had worked for the Southern Railway before taking his job with the k &T. Eighty foot turntable, eighty five foot locomotive. <laughs> Mr. Morris right here. Mr. Bruce brought the forty five hundred one from Princeton to Stern after purchasing it for about eighty eight hundred dollars from the Southern Railway. It operated, uh, he took it to Stern and they repainted it and renumbered it as Kentucky and Tennessee Railway Number Twelve. The K T had two other two eight two locomotives. The 10 and the 11, which they both, which they purchased both of those brand new. 4501 walked through there for what became engine number 12 on the 22.
these are our real machines back here, and I'll tell you what I can about it, and I may have to ask for some help. So we've got some experts in here today. Over here on your right is our 90-inch wheel machine. <laughs> he's, he's sometimes in Chattanooga, sometimes in Nashville, sometimes elsewhere. This is Shane. Um, 90 inch wheel lathe. So this is the machine that's used to profile not only the tires, the exterior of the tires on the wheels, the tires that go onto the wheel centers, but you can also machine the wheel center itself, get the proper uh, diameter to put the tires on. Well, I like to tell people, of course you all are railroad people, so I, I can't really pull one over on you, but I tell people, you know, these have tires on them. They're not good years, but they're tires. And if you've ever seen those uh, put on or taken off of those wheel centers, it's quite something to see. You've got the ring of fire to, to uh, heat it up, and expand it or whatever to, to put it on or off. Um, now over here we've got our, this is our quartering machine. And looks like some quartering is going on right now. Um, so don't put your finger in there. <laughs> now these are, this is one of the set of wheels from the 1225. I can tell because it has spokes on it. Uh, the wheels for the uh, 576 over here are box okay. So these are box pop uh, wheel centers, and they don't have the spokes on them. They're all cast, and you can tell they have the circles on them. That's how I identify them, at least. That's uh, layman's terms, you might say. Uh, and then our other machine over here is the, uh, let's see, we've got, the, this is the quartering machine. That's the journal lathe over there. So that's where you would surface the inside of the axle where the weight of the locomotive would sit. So we don't have anything going on on that one right now, but uh, these guys from FMW are in here uh, working on wheels all the time. Um, all right, we're gonna let Shane tell you a little bit more about the wheels and uh, he knows a little bit about the 576 and might as well talk about it. We've got part of it here. <laughs> Yeah, Steve mentioned uh, we do have two sets of wheels in. Uh, been working on the 576 wheels. Uh, those are pretty much done. Uh, we put new tires, uh, two new crank pins. We've quartered all the crank pins. Uh, we rebuilt, uh, refurbished all the roller bearings. Uh, so currently, the roller bearing boxes are at a couple different machine shops, actually, uh, in the process of being refurbished, uh, as well as having new liners. So once those are done, we'll be able to assemble the roller bearing boxes on the, those wheels, and then they'll be headed back to Nashville for hopefully the next month and a half, two months or so. Uh, the 1225 wheels, uh, the last process uh, of the whole wheel work uh, process is the quartering machine. And really, we want to do that last for a couple different reasons. Number one is if we do anything with the tires, then, you know, if we replace them or even we turn them or mostly replace them, the pressure of the tires when they shrink on the wheel, they will actually move that crank pin right there as it shrinks on top. So obviously we want to make sure that no more movement is going to be happening, whether in the work process or changing tires, etc. So um, this is the third set of wheels in the quarter machine for the 1225. We'll have the main left to do. And once that's done, uh, this will be headed back to Old Austin. So, um, as Steve mentioned, uh, these wheels are actually what we call honey bearing. They're not roller bearing. They, they have individual bearing boxes. They ride on the brass, basically a uh, bush and a crown brass. And for any kind of plain locomotive driving wheel, that's what goes in the journal way. And that's what we'll return. We'll reprofile the hub, the journal, and then we'll roll them. Similar to what we're doing with this crank pin here, the quarter machine. And basically, what roll burnishing is, is basically like a, a mechanical work hardening of the surface. So it's smoothing it out, but it's also putting a, it's, it's compressing that outer layer of steel to make it a little bit more tough. Or more hard. So that's, that's pretty much what we've, what we've been up to back here um, today. We're, Sweat pretty good, but you know, we're making some progress. Yeah, but that's the
No, sir. So the question was, do we have to flip the wheel? No, actually, the quarter machine has two different machine heads that are set quarter turn apart. So we can actually machine both crank pins at the same time. So, and the only reason, we've actually machined both of these crank pins. We only have one roll burnisher uh, tool, roll burnishing tool, uh, that will fit in this quarter machine attachment. So what we'll do is, um, once we're done here, we'll put the roll burnisher on that. But the nice thing about this quarter machine, too, is, is that if you do need to change a crank pin, say it's condemned because of size or whatever, then we can actually cut it out, push it out, and we can put these boring attachments into the quarter machine, and we can bore the holes in the quarter, uh, and then apply a brand new pin. So, first we'll All right, thank you, Shane. Any other questions, real quick? Okay, yes, sir. Oh, the machines, yes, the machines. These are 1930s machines. Um, this one has a 1934 patent on it. Um, these, these two machines here um, were acquired from Poland. They were sent over to Poland um, at the end of our steam uh, in, in this country. They were sent over to Poland during the Marshall Plan, and that's why they got saved. And we were able to reacquire them, purchase them, and bring them back. Now, the wheel machine here itself, um, this was kind of a fluke that we ended up with this uh, one of our members was checking a auction list at one time and found listed a 90-inch freight wheel lathe, and he knew that was not a freight wheel lathe. And uh, so it was it was acquired. This came from the Glenwood shops, I think it was near Pittsburgh, B&O shops, um, and it was purchased. Brought to Chattanooga, sat for 15 years or more on a flat car out in the elements before uh, we were able to expand our shop and install it here. Um, right here was used to be the back of the shop, and we extended it on back to install these machines for this purpose. They actually installed the bed of this machine and built the building around it to, uh, to properly uh, house it in here. Um, so like I said, 1930s machines, uh, restored by volunteers here in our shop and upgraded with uh, electronics and things, they have soft start on them to help with the, uh, the motors, you know, to, to extend their life and that type of thing. So I'm very proud of the shop. Like I said, only place in North America you can stand to see these three machines. Some places have a wheel machine, a wheel lathe and maybe a uh, journal lathe with a quartering attachment to it, but that's not quite the same. They can do the job, but it's a little bit better if you can do it on all three separate machines. So.
there you go, man. Cavings, that's been this train trip at the TVRM here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, for the Unscale Enthusiast Convention free event, which uh, is the day before the actual convention starts tomorrow. So all these uh, other people that we were with today are heading back on a bus up to Nashville, and uh, I'm going to meet them there and see everybody tomorrow. But hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, maybe if you uh, get a chance to come down to Chattanooga, Tennessee, you get to ride on one of these excursions. Uh, I think they do steam usually on the weekend and diesel during the week. So plan ahead, uh, check their schedules, the tvrm.org, I believe, website. And uh, as always, man, Cavians, if uh, you like what you saw here, consider subscribing. Ring that bell to get notified of future videos like this one. And as always, man, Cavians, happy model railroading. You stay off those tracks. Bye.